Let's do this. Welcome back to a beautiful breezy Tahiti. Last time we talked about how we get water aboard Curiosity. This time we're going to talk about how we store it and how we purify and filter it. And why should you give a crap about what I have to say? Well, nine years we've been living off the grid. I mean, just nine years. And uh, back in the RV, it was very similar. If you're in a tiny house, it's probably pretty similar as this situation. So it kind of expands anybody who's living off the grid, just kind of this whole concept of storing and purifying water. So on Curiosity, we have 200 gallon tanks, one on the port side, one on the starboard side. I know last time I talked about how clean and pure, it's like perfectly pure RO water is, but we can't always use our water maker. Sometimes it breaks, or sometimes we're in a river that's super dirty. Sometimes we have to use dock water. So like Nikki mentioned, when we go for a public source, you never know the quality. You never really know if it's clean. I'll just leave it at that. But that doesn't really matter because to fill our tanks, the only way to do it is to open them and that exposes them to contaminants in the air, bacteria that's just floating around. So now we have water with bacteria, air with bacteria, all going into this tank, which is hot. We're in tropical climates. It's basically enclosed, so it gets kind of steamy, and there's bacteria growing in there. It just kind of... And it's not perfectly sealed anyway. Yeah, it's not perfectly sealed anyway. These hoses going in and, and all this stuff, I don't know. It's just not hermetically sealed. So there is bacteria that's gonna grow, and that wouldn't be a big deal, if our tanks were smaller because we could reach in and clean them by hand, sanitize them. Well, our tanks are so big, they're oblong shape, they have lots and lots of depth, it's almost impossible to get to the whole thing. Trust me, we've tried. The only way to clean them would be probably to remove them. But that's not really an option. So, no matter what, we have bacteria, we have sediment in here, we need to purify it and we need to filter it before we drink it. And I'll tell you about that. There is water filtration and purification. We do both. Now there are carbon filters like these that we start with. Uh, this is kind of made for like a whole house situation, whole boat thing. Uh, this is what we would use right at the hose. So we would connect this and everything runs through here first before we would put it into our tank. But even on this filter, it says, do not use where water is microbiologically unsafe or with water of unknown quality without adequate disinfection before or after the filter. And that's because these carbon filters, just like the pitchers that you can get or the units you can attach to your like kitchen faucet, those are all carbon-based filters and they remove things like heavy metals, like lead, chemicals, like chlorine, but they don't do anything for like those really nasty creatures like E. coli or Giardia. So that is why we have to then still purify our water. Sorry, Cleo, I know you're sleeping. Which is where, okay, hold on. There are lots of different ways to purify our water. Now, one is of course, like if you've ever been camping and you've used like those iodine tablets, that's fine, but that's meant for like temporary. You're not supposed to use those all the time. You can put chlorine into your tanks and a lot of people do that, but I mean, there are disadvantages to that namely your health, but also because of cultures. We make bread and we make yogurt and chlorine will totally kill your bacteria. So that's something else to consider. And then I've had, I can't tell you how many sailors who are like, oh no, you just throw a cup of rum in your tanks. That'll kill everything in there. I wanted that to be true. Very badly I wanted that to be true. But did some digging and turns out that if you want to use any sort of liquor as a disinfectant, you have to use it full strength. It is at full strength that it can actually kill stuff. You dilute it and now you've just got watered down booze and that's no bueno. So are you saying that you should just drink booze all the time? You should just drink booze. Why even have water? <laughs> no, we still need water. And that is where UV purification comes in. And we have one that is actually installed at our sink here. So that's for our drinking water. Um, you've probably seen like the stereo pens or stipend pens. I forgot what those are called. 
or the Camelback All Clear. We have that, which is for like hiking and backpacking. The tabletop the, unit we had in the RV. Oh yeah, we had a tabletop unit in the in the RV. Yeah, in we, our house. I know. Yeah, so we've gone through lots of different purification methods, but UV is always the one way to make sure that your water is totally safe, kills everything. You're good to go. We have this unit here, which is called an Acuva, and well, it's installed installed underneath the sink, so we'll go there. Okay, welcome to underneath our sink. <laughs> this is our little system set up underneath here, and we have our carbon-based filter, which is here, and so the water comes through here first, and then flows into the Acuva, which is where the, there we go, the UV light is on, and so it swirls around in there, and the, the key being is that it has to stay near the UV light long enough to actually kill everything. This does that. So it goes through there, then it comes through, and this is our like remineralization filter, and we added that as like an extra one because, well, it's always good to add extra minerals back into your water when you've filtered and purified everything right out of it. But if I'm being completely honest, it's because it's supposed to make your coffee taste better. <laughs> and we thought, why not? Because, you know, coffee snobs. Anyway. So there you have it. That is how we filter and purify our water. Now I did the math on the cost of the unit versus how much water we would have to buy in a year and it turns out in less than a year the unit pays for itself. This five liter jug is the largest water size they have here. It's $3.30. So the average person needs to consume around two liters a day. So for the two of us that's four liters a day. So it is well worth the investment, not only just money-wise, we actually save money in the long run, but also for like schlepping water back and forth. And that means no plastic. We're not dealing with all those plastic jugs. We're not buying plastic bottles. And that's a really big deal um, considering how much of that ends up right back into the ocean and is no good. So it's better for the environment, better for us. There's really no downside. Uh, oh, if you want an an Acuva, a unit of your own. They did offer up a discount. No, this is not sponsored. They just offered up a discount of a hundred bucks off any unit you might want to purchase. You just have to enter the discount code WINS whenever you're on the checkout portion of their website and it will automatically apply that $100 off. And I think that is it. We've covered how we get water, where we get it, how we store it, purify it, filter it, anything from the peanut gallery. Okay, if you've got any comments, questions, tips, things you've learned over the years yourself, please make sure and share them down in the comment box below. We will get that conversation started. And that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. uh -huh.